here's what to do as a virtual assistant if your client doesn't pay their invoice but also what not to do. Now, before we start, it's incredibly rare for clients not to pay their invoice, especially if you follow my tip in a minute. But I want you to just feel at ease knowing that you've got things that you can do should somebody start being difficult. I'm Catherine Gladwin and I've been a virtual assistant since late 2015 and I've been helping women just like you become virtual assistants since 2018. Okay, so my first tip to even avoid ever having somebody not pay is to take a deposit or the full amount that they're going to owe you up front. So obviously with ad hoc work, you can't take the full amount up front. So I recommend you take a deposit and I usually take three hours worth of work from them. So your hourly rate may be £30, take £90 from them. And the reason for this is so that they've got your bank details in their bank. So that when the invoice comes through at the end of the month, they just got to press a button. You don't get any of this like, oh, I've sent it through, I must have done a digit wrong. Or I'm waiting for a new card reader. Or yeah, my bookkeeper deals with all of that. But if we take money up front, all our details are in their bank and there's no excuses. Now my second tip, God, I'm giving them all to you today, before we go into what to do if you've got a late or non-payer, is to make your payment terms either payment on receipt or seven days maximum. My payment terms for clients are seven days. They used to be 14, but the problem was if somebody doesn't pay, you can't chase until the day after it's due. So if you make it payment on receipt or seven days, you can chase a lot quicker. If you were to make it 30 days payment terms, you can't chase until day 31, which means you'd have done 60 days work before you can chase that invoice. And that's gonna have been a lot of hours and a lot of money now owing to you. And I don't want you in that situation. Getting into that situation puts you regularly in that feast or famine cycle. Okay, so here's how to deal with a late payer. But remember, it is really, really rare, so don't worry. Okay, so you've set your payment terms at payment on receipt or within seven days. Now, if you're using contracts that you downloaded from Google or a mate gave you or somebody gave you during a VA masterclass and they've got no legal training, then I'm going to advise you to get rid of them. The contracts that I use are from Coffee Clatch and I'll give you a code at the end to get 10% off. But within these, they're written by actual lawyers. They're made for the VA business and you can set your payment terms in their fantastic booking form that they give you with the terms of business. So within there, you can set the payment terms as payment on receipt, seven days, whatever you choose, and the client signs that. So that if there's a problem with them not paying, you've got everything signed by the client and you can say, buddy, you've already agreed to it, get the money in the bank. So yeah, take a look at your terms of business, your contract, anything you've got, and if then the payment terms aren't clear on there, then have a look at the coffee clutch terms of business and get those as soon as possible. If you've not got any contracts, you need to get them now just to cover yourself. Okay, so like I said, you can chase the day after your invoice is due and I recommend you do that via email, not a phone call, and that's just so that you've got everything in writing. So do send a kind email, something like, hi, you may not have noticed, but your invoice was due yesterday. So may I ask you to put it through to my bank at, by 5 p.m. on such and such a date? I mean, you can do it on that day if you like. That's usually what I would do is say 5 p.m. on that day. Brilliant. Nothing else. You don't need to say anything. Don't need to apologize or anything like that. And usually that's the end of it. The client pays, you get on with working for them for the next month jobs are good. Now, if they haven't paid by the date and time that you've set, then my advice is to stop work. Don't do any more work for them. Send them an email and say, invoice has still not been paid and I've not heard from you. So I'm going to stop work until you're able to put the money through for invoice number, blah, 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 so that I don't accumulate any more losses. Because if they've not paid that invoice, there's a chance they're not going to pay a future one either. And I don't want you accumulating any more hours for them and losing any more money. Now, at this stage, you might think, oh, yeah, but I, I don't want to ruin the client relationship. You don't want a client that doesn't pay their invoice. That is not what you need. I put a video on TikTok once about this. I actually had to take it off because I was getting quite a bit of abuse about, yeah, you no, know, the customer's always right. You, you, yeah, one way to ruin your client's relationship or one way for you to get a bad reputation. Uh, no, you. I want you to stay out of that feast or famine cycle because otherwise you're going to be struggling every month. I want you on this VA journey so that you haven't got stress in your life. So this is why 
you scrap those clients that don't pay their invoices. They're not worth it. They're, it is not worth the stress. You're already getting paid, what, £30 an hour. 30% of that goes to the tax man. You don't want to be wasting any more time chasing endless invoices. So if somebody hasn't paid, if they're not responding to your emails after point one and point two, then it's absolutely fine to just say, look, mate, that's enough now. I am not, I'm not going to do any more work for you. This invoice needs to be paid. And you can say it as kindly as you want to. It doesn't have to get nasty at this point. It doesn't ever have to get nasty, really, does it? Now, in the highly unlikely event that they've still not paid, the next step is to send them another email and say that you'll now be adding interest to their invoice. Currently, the government advised that it's 8% plus the Bank of England base rate. Now, I'm going to put a sum on the screen in a minute, but if you go to the gov.uk website and you search for late commercial invoices, interest, I made that really long-winded, search for that and it will show you what the current rate is. While I'm making this video, it is 8% plus the Bank of England base rate. So let's say that you are owed £1,000 the interest that you can add to that is 8%. Um, the Bank of England base rate, let's say that's 0.5%. So on a thousand pound, you could charge 85 pound over a year. I know that seems very little, but once you tell the client that you're gonna start charging interest, that can push them into like, oh, I've got, got a better pay because they don't want any extra money owing to you. So if they owed a thousand pound, it would be 85 pound over the year, which works out 23p a day. Again, I know that seems minimal, but the threat of adding, oh God, I've used that word threat, I'm going to get abused, but the, I'm going to use it, but the threat of adding interest will often make them think, I don't need this on my shoulders. I am just going to get that paid. It's a deterrent. You'll also find on the gov.uk website that you can charge a maximum of £100 for the late payment processing. So you're going to be spending your time chasing that money. I think up to 99000 or 9999 you're going to have to have a look. I think you can charge £40. Don't quote me, always check the gov.uk website because I'm just saying what's on there today and it could change tomorrow. But it's completely legit. You can add interest in the UK and I recommend you do that. You tell the client you're going to do it and indeed do it. Don't make any threats, do it. Now in the really highly unlikely event that you've still not been paid, then you can go to the small claims court and claim your money. And this is why I've told you to do everything by email because you'll need to send proof that you've tried to get the money, that you've been reasonable, you've been kind and you've sent them emails and you can send those emails as proof. You can send the invoice as proof and your terms of business, which is why you must have the best contract as well. So if you have to go down the small claims route, then you've got all of the proof that have said that you've done everything possible to try and get that money back. And it shows that they owe the money as well. It will, it will be on your side. I did have to go that far quite early on in my business before I thought, mm, I'm gonna take deposits or money up front. I trusted this guy. He owed me about 360 pound. And I went as far as the small claims court. Didn't get to the point where it's heard in court because he paid in the end, he got scared and paid. I was incredibly lucky because if you Google his name, I'm not gonna give you it, it's not fair. He owes Swindon businesses hundreds of thousands of pounds. He's even been in prison for fraud. So I thought, how am I gonna get over this in the future? I can't Google every client and, and see if they've been committing fraud or something like that. Instead, it, that's when I decided I was gonna take deposits or money up front, and I've not had a problem since. Now, I mentioned earlier that I put a similar video to this on TikTok, and I got a lot of people on there on the comments telling me I was wrong for my advice on how to chase late or non-payers. And I'm gonna cover a few of the things that they said, and this will help you think of the things not to do when chasing late payers. So the first lady, who works in a finance department, so not a small business owner, never has to worry about feast or famine because she's getting a regular paycheck and is paid every month. Recommends that for client relationships, you should always phone the client and not send them an email to chase the invoice. And I disagree with this because like I said, if it does get as far as the small claims court, you've got to send that information to them. You've got to send that proof. And it, you can't say, ah, yeah, we had a phone call and Dave said, I... I am definitely going to pay it. Dave promised to pay it. Because then it's your word against Dave's. So that's why everything has to be an email. The second throwback I had, and this was my favourite. So this was from John that works in construction. 
And John said, if somebody doesn't pay their invoice, you offer them a discount. That always gets them to pay it. Hang on a minute, John. No, because like, if I got wind, if I was like, so I go and have my nails done or something like that. If I go to them and say, oh, I've not brought my bank card with me. If I knew full well that they would be like, never mind come back tomorrow and it will be 20 percent cheaper no, i'd never pay because i'd just wait for the discount you do not offer somebody a discount as an incentive to pay your bill i can't see any logic in that i blocked john anyway and the woman that said about calling them is called daisy i blocked daisy as well and the other thing i add as well so because of the question i think i'd better cover it somebody said to me on tiktok in the comments even if you've got that you're going to charge interest in your terms of business, you can't charge interest. Mate, why would you even put it in your terms of business if you can't do it? Anyway, you can. But this is the importance of having the right terms of business, the right contract. And like I said at the beginning of the video or early on in the video, I highly recommend you get your contracts from Coffee Clatch. You only need to buy them once and you can use them for multiple clients. And you don't send them every month, you just send it once. And it has got the wonderful free booking form with it as well, where you can say, you're gonna have to pay a deposit before work starts, and then future payments have to be made, payment on receipt or payment within seven days. So if you've not yet got contracts, or if you're using some that a mate gave you, you downloaded from Google, or somebody from a VA mastermind that has got no legal training gave you them, then head over to Coffee Clatch so that you're covered. And don't forget, if you use code CAF10, you get 10% off. Now, I want to reiterate that it is really, really rare for a client not to pay their invoice. Like I said, in seven years, I've only had it twice. And in the end, they paid anyway, because I've gone through the steps. But it has not happened since I asked for a deposit upfront or full amount upfront. So please do do that. And as per my recommendation, do change your terms of payment as well to either payment on receipt or within seven days maximum. If you've currently got clients that are on 30 day payment terms, just email them a new booking form and new terms of business and let them know that you're sending them that because the terms of payment are changing just so that you can manage your cash flow a lot better. Now, it is really heartbreaking when a client doesn't pay but I want you to know that it is not about you. It is not about the work that you've provided or, or that you've done a bad job or anything like that. It's always about the client's cash flow. So please don't beat yourself up. Now, thanks for watching. And as always, I'm gonna ask you, if you're not already, then please do subscribe and hit that bell so that you're notified next time I release a video.